In previous chapters, we dealt with primitive variables that were only able to hold one value. In this chapter, we'll learn about arrays. Arrays are special objects or containers which can hold multiple values. So here's a typical variable. It's declared as an integer and can hold a single integer value. But what if you need something to hold multiple values because collectively they're a unit, like for example, a lottery ticket. Let's say a lottery ticket is comprised of six integer numbers. Well, we can use an array for this. This is the declaration for an array. Let's examine. The first part is the data type that the array holds. And while the array is capable of holding multiple values, all values must be of the same data type. The square brackets indicate that this is not just an int data type, but this will be an array of ints. The bracket can appear here or after the variable name itself. Speaking of name, that's the next part of the declaration. We name arrays just as we would any other variable. The name is followed by an equal sign, and then we use the new keyword followed by the data type again, followed by a number inside of the brackets. This number inside of the brackets represents the length of the array, meaning how many values can this array store. Once the length is declared, it's fixed, meaning it cannot be lengthened to hold more values. If I were to draw a picture of what an array looks like, it will resemble something like this. There are six slots here, and each of them are able to hold a single value. These numbers at the bottom represent the indices of each space within the array. It's like an address. Each index points to one of the slots. So if we were to have this lotto ticket array that holds six numbers, each of those numbers would be an element inside of the array. Notice that the indices begin with zero, and index zero represents the first element of the array. Let's see how we add actual values to this array. Each element in an array works as an individual variable. It can be read or set by accessing its index. We can assign values to an element of the array by specifying the element's index. For example, we assign 24 as the first element of the array by indicating the array's name followed by the index. The second element of the array will be 18 and so on. Those values would then be stored as such and they become elements of the array. Alternatively, if you know all values of the array's elements, you can use curly braces as a shortcut to initialize the array. This will create the new array with the length of however many values are specified within the curly braces, and they are separated with a comma. And then this will assign those values to those appropriate elements. To read the value of an element, you simply use the array's name in the index of the element that you like. So in this example, we are reading out the third lottery number by using the index of two. So let's look at an example. We're gonna create a lottery quick pick application that will generate a lottery ticket with six random numbers between one and 69. I'm going to show you how to write this program, but if any one of you uses this and wins the lottery, I do expect my cut, okay? Let's get started. We have a new class here in package chapter seven for lottery ticket. I'm going to create a new method that's going to generate the lottery numbers. So let's go ahead and make this, we'll make it static. And it's going to return 
the lottery ticket. So it's going to return an array. So this is how we specify the return data type if it's an array. It's simply that data type with the brackets and then the name of the method. So inside of here, we want to create a new array and let's call it ticket and we'll give it a size of six. Now this at this point is a magic number. Who knows why this is six? So we can create a variable so that this is not a magic number. And let's say private static int, and we're gonna call this length and assign it six. Notice I wrote this variable name in all caps. This is a different type of variable. I'm indicating that this is going to be a constant. And what a constant is, is a field within your class that does not change. Its value does not change. So what I'm saying here is the length is always going to be six and that nothing within this program should update length to be some other number. To make sure that doesn't happen, we can add the keyword final here to say this is final. And it's in all caps because that is the convention for constants. So if you're going to make a constant field, you want to name it in all caps so that when people see it within the program, they know that this is a constant. So we'll go here and update this to use the constant. So the next thing I want to do is to randomly generate numbers to assign on the ticket. So I don't want to hard code these numbers. In order to do that, we're going to use this class called random. And what this does is allows us to generate random values of various different data types. There's an option to generate random integers. In fact, if you did one of the earlier optional exercises, you use the random generator for your dice game. So we're going to create that. Now what we want to do is assign the values. So I can essentially generate a random number and then I can assign it to one of the elements in the ticket array. However, there are six numbers here, which means I'm going to repeat those steps six different times. And remember, if we're going to repeat something, then it's best to do it inside of a loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a for loop. Because we know how many times we want to do it, a count control loop is our best option. So I can say for int i, and i is less than the length, and then i plus plus. So now, since i begins with zero, and array indices begin with zero, this works really nicely. So we can say, assign a random value to the i element of the array. So in the first round, this will be zero, the second iteration will be one, and so this will increase on its own, and we are going to assign it a random number. So we can say random dot next int. And we see that this is an overloaded method. There's one that takes nothing, and there's one that has a bound, which means that we can say create a number between zero and this bound. So we'll use the one with the bound since our numbers have to be between one and 69. Now the bound itself is exclusive, meaning it won't consider this. So if we said 69 here, then this will create a number between zero and 68. And because we want one in 69, we would need to say, go ahead and generate whatever you're gonna generate, and then we'll add one to it. So that will make sure that it's always between one and 69. Now again, we have 69 here as a magic number, so I'm going to also make another constant, and we'll call this max ticket number.
Okay, so that's the whole loop. So this will execute six times and we'll have all of those numbers populated within this ticket array. And then we can just return the ticket and we're good. So in our main method, let's go ahead and receive that ticket. And then we'll want to print it out. So let's make a new method to print out an array so that I can show you how you read from an array. So this was an example of setting elements. Now I wanna show you how to get them. So we'll create a new method called print ticket. And this will receive the ticket. So we'll specify an array as a parameter to a method. So again, we wanna print out all of the numbers. It's best to do that with a loop as opposed to trying to print them line by line. So we use the for loop again. This time we can just print those numbers out. Now I'm not gonna use the print LN like we usually do. I'm just gonna use this print one instead. Print LN is for print line, meaning there will be a line return. So each number would print on a separate line. Instead of that, I want all of the numbers to print on the same line. So I can do that using just the print statement. And inside of here, I'm just going to access the array element using whichever index we're on. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a space so that all the numbers aren't jumbled together. And for good measure, let's add a little pipe delimiter as well. Great. And so in our main method, let's call this one. So we'll say print ticket and give it the ticket that we receive. And let's run it. Beautiful. So we see here that it generated six random numbers.